easy, easy, easy. Hundreds of miles from civilization, in the American West, there's a unique breed of men. Come on, baby. Come on. Risking their lives. Delivering vital supplies to those living not just off the grid, <laughs> but on the edge of the world. Come on, kids, go! Holy crap! In this episode, let's do it! Jet boat pilot Bryce Barnes negotiates a stubborn cargo. Come on. Oh. Freight hauler Roger Phillips yeah. pushes his wife yeah. past her limit. Oh. And dog mushers Jeff and Paul Heeman get up. drive their huskies to the max. Yep, yep, get up. To build a new homestead. Whoa. All on the Dead End Express. Five AM in Squetna, Alaska. I'm gonna go down and start coffee. Just a few minutes, I'll be down. Okay. With less than seven hours of light each day, freight hauler Roger Phillips rises early. And for today's job, he's gonna need all the daylight he can get. Today, I'm hauling dog food for the Northern Lights 300 uh, dog sled race. Hi, Jeffers. I got a text last night, increase the amount of food that I've got to haul by I don't know how much. I very sheepishly asked Myra if she would help me. She has graciously gotten up in a very chipper mood this morning. I have a wife that is truly one in a million. Roger and his wife Myra met as teenagers. And 35 years later, when he needs a hand, she's there to help. Okay. Myra typically drives the older machine, which doesn't ride as well, but it also doesn't pull quite as much. Yes, Mama's got your food. She's pulled a single freight sled but a half a dozen times. Hopefully that's all I need her to do today. I'll find out when I get to the landing what what I've got, I really don't know what I'm gonna run into. Rogers upgraded his snow machine with extra suspension and metal studs in the track to help him on the ice. But machine number two is getting old, and that's the one his wife is riding. Let these warm up for a few minutes. Beautiful morning. I typically go freighting with him two or three times a year. It's different. <laughs> I, I don't know that I would want to do it full time, but it uh, gets me out of here. And I get to spend time with him. The first stop on today's journey is Deshka Landing, the collection point for the cargo of dog food. All I gotta do is hook up on the way out. All right. All right. Love you. I love you too. Be careful. Myra has ridden enough with the snow machines. I trust her more than she trusts herself. Ready? Good. Okay. Jeff and Paul Heeman are depending on the power of their husky team hey, hey, come on, come on. to help a fellow off-gritter 
Also making the most of nature's power. We're delivering a windmill to Steve because he lives off the grid. And right now, he doesn't have any way to access his place. All right, Ty, good boy. Steve's windmill is going to allow him to charge up a battery system that he has. Good boy, Ty. With the trip expected to take only five hours, Jeff and Paul are counting on some free time later for a pet project. Ugh. Cutting down trees to build their own log cabin. On the foothills in the Alaska Range is where our property is. That's where we're going to be building our house. We got a good start on it, and now we've got a good snow conditions. I got my dad along, and my wife, Heather, and Granite, they're all going to come out today. Oh. That's it, Dad! Yeah! Tired! Good job! Thank you. So we're going to start climbing the hill here? Yeah, that's why I give the dogs just kind of a little break just to really recharge yeah. them. I think they're looking set. Are you good? Yeah. OK, let's go. Getting up to this cabin of Steve's, it's like, are we there yet? Ready. Yeah, bam! Woo! <laughs> the trail to their client's cabin is normally well packed. Easy. All right. But today's fresh snow is challenging both the dogs and the mushers. All right! Uh, Get up! Hey. Oh, man, that's deep. It's OK. We're almost there. Uh, it's really tough. Getting up, trying to find the tree. You lose it. It's windblown. My dad's still new to mushing, and he's he's just having a little hard time today. Uh, here in four feet of snow, it's bottomless. Jeff and Paul must plow their way through the snow fast, that's or it. they'll have no yep. time to work yep. on their cabin. Yep. Yep. I mean, that's a pain getting up there. Jesus. Oh. Come on. Come on. Wait a minute. Ah, that's what I mean. Ah, I, I, I'm stuck. Ah. 1,750 miles southeast. Winter is on the horizon. It's right around 30 degrees right now. The Snake River doesn't freeze over, but in this wilderness, only true survivors stick out the snow season. And jet boat pilot Bryce Barnes has got to take care of the family ranch. So today, I'm headed to Pittsburgh Landing to pick up my dad and his wife. We've got a couple of mules that we need to haul out of here. We've got all the snow coming right now. It's getting harder up in the higher elevations. So we're just going to get them out of the canyon, take them back, and uh, we'll winter them in town this year. My dad's 73 years old, goes like he's, you know, 40. He's taught me so much about the river and horses. Hey, guys, how are you? Are you ready to go haul mules out? I'm ready to go haul some mules out, Pops. All right. Plan is just to take two today. Yeah, we'll go up and get Cracker and Rue, and uh, with the roads the way they are, I think that'd be the best. OK, let's do it. How's the boat running? Awesome. Hauling live animals safely over these rapids takes a skilled boat operator. Luckily, Bryce has been trained by the best. My dad taught me to drive a boat when I was just a little kid. I actually sat on my lap as I'd come up the river. 
I'd put my hands on his shoulders. <laughs> uh, that's what he used to do. This side, that side, push forward, pull back. If I wanted him to turn left, I'd squeeze his left shoulder. If I wanted him to turn right, I'd squeeze his right shoulder. You're going to be deep enough right here. OK. He's become a very good operator, very conscientious, and that's the way he was raised. Well, we'll go up and get the mules and see if we can load them. OK. Hey, buddy. Hi, partner. Some of the dangers putting a mule on a boat, you know, having them freak out and have a big rodeo on your boat and try to jump out right in the middle of the river, <laughs> it can get pretty wild, you know, real quick. Don't get too close to Rue. She don't like anybody behind her. Animals are so unpredictable, you just never know. Come on, Cracker. Mules are cautious by nature. So when they dig in their heels, it means something's not right. Come on, Cracker. Come on. I don't know. Let me see Rue. Come on, Rue. Come on, Rue. Come on. Come on. I don't know why Cracker's not getting on this boat right now. Come on. Come on, Crack. Thing about mules is, uh, you know, it's got to be their idea or they ain't going to do it. Come on, Cracker. Dumbass mules. Come on, Cracker. In Hell's Canyon. Bryce, give me your hand. Jet boat pilot Bryce Barnes is hauling his father's mules into town for the winter months. But the mules aren't so eager for the ride. Come on. Come on. He didn't like them rocks. No, he didn't. Nice and easy, kids. Something that you see every day. We tie their heads up so they're looking right at me, so their butts are pointed that way, so they don't see what's coming. I try to be as smooth as possible coming through the rapids so it doesn't get too bouncy. You know, then all of a sudden you bounce one and he tips over or falls down and he can't get up because he can't get his feet underneath him. That's only the first leg of the mule's journey. Now they must brave the winter snow, crossing Pittsburgh's summit en route to their winter stable. Thanks, Bob. Be careful. See you later. Hello? What's up? Empty, empty. I'll get in there. I'll get it done. That was Shelly, the caretaker at Temperance Creek. She checked the propane tank this morning, and it reads zero. Shelly's all alone up there right now. Without propane, no stove, no freezer, no refrigerator no oven, it makes life a lot tougher than it already is. For Bryce, last minute deliveries are a vital part of his business, especially when Hell's Canyon residents are gearing up for the long winter. 
I'm gonna have to get my propane guy to meet me in here ASAP. Hey, it's Bryce, how you doing? Um, I know it's short notice, but are you available to come and build me up? And you guys are lifesavers. That's fantastic. I really appreciate it. But the propane suppliers got a rough road into Hell's Canyon. My propane guys are available. They gotta come over a pretty bad pass. Pittsburgh Summit, so uh it's time to haul. hundred miles to the northwest, freight hauler Roger Phillips has enlisted his wife Myra's help on a massive food delivery for a dog sled race. Well, look who showed up. How are you? I'm the race manager for the Northern Lights 300. It's a 300 mile sled dog race, and it's a qualifier for the Iditarod and the Yukon Quest 1,000 mile races. Dog sled racing in Alaska dates back to the early 1900s, with the 1,000 plus mile Iditarod being the granddaddy of them all. That weather turned cold, boy, and they wanted to send a lot more food. Oh, man. Yeah. Roger's got to make food drops at two different checkpoints along the race course. There's about 140 bags here. I am going to need a third freight sled for me. It's going to take five to get all this out there. But he can't tow five freight sleds alone. Oh, this is going to be fun. My wife is going to have to haul double freight sleds that she's never done before. Not only have you never hauled doubles, you've never hauled 3,000 before. I know. Thanks a bunch, guy. Yeah, I've freighted a couple times, pulled singles, never a double. So this will be interesting. Good job. Hauling a second sled, the driver has less control, and the added weight can pull the snow machine off course. This is scary heavy. Holy crap! Okay. 30 pounds a piece, huh? Oh, bummer. Oh, that bag stinks. I don't know what they got in there. Probably dead fish. You know, you know it smells like beaver caster. <laughs> oh, my God, that's heavy. We are getting our asses handed to us today in every sense of the fashion. How did Roger talk me into doing this? I'm not sure, um, but it's gonna cost. That's a sled load. He'll owe me for a while, <laughs> but that's okay. Stretch. Turpin and Fur is holding the bag on over here. I can guarantee you Nobody has pulled this much weight up the river yet this year. <laughs> weight that'll test both Myra and the ice. This is unbelievable. Yeah, I'm stuck. Deep snow is proving to be a problem for novice dog musher Paul Heeman. In his quest to deliver a wind generator to a fellow off gridder. Come on, Jada. Come on. Get me over the snow. Get me over the snow. Come on. It takes everything out of you to be punching through that snow. I'm exhausted. It's up to his son, Jeff, to figure out a solution. I'm kind of getting an idea, maybe. Instead of two teams, Maybe let's try to bring your team up to mine. Got yeah, yeah. I'm linking together both of our dog teams because you can get more power out of a longer string of dogs than with two kind of medium-sized loads. This will be a lot better for the dogs. To, you know, we still have a long day ahead of us. But combining the power of two dog teams requires both consideration and strategy. 
We're trying to do this right, because if we mess this up right now, we can have a loose dog team. Easy. With 11 competing personalities, pairing up the wrong two dogs could spell disaster for the whole pack. I just have to visualize this for a second. Okay. Okay, this is your, he's gonna be the back of the team now. Okay. Want me to hold this one? Uh, ratchet, line out, line, line out. out. Okay. Think. <laughs> I can't believe this puzzle you're putting together. You are so incredible. Alaskan Huskies are born to run, so it's only a matter of time before they get worked up. This isn't working out as smooth as I like it to right now. Okay. <laughs> Okay, see, they're starting to go. Ratchet, swing them to the left. Look, I'm trying. Swing them to the left. Look, I'm trying. Okay, you got them? You're doing great. Thank you. So far. Dog mushers Jeff and Paul Heeman are wrestling to combine their husky teams in knee-deep powder. We got a lot of testosterone. You know. But with more power, there's less control. There's a lot of power here. Eleven dogs. Organized chaos right here. It's organized chaos, I promise. Nice and easy. You know, working with my son Jeff has he is just a, a master of control. Just hold him for a minute. Okay. I can't second guess him because I don't have the experience he does. So when he says jump, I say how high, and it's done. Yeah, we got it now. We're set. Ready. All right. All right. With 11 dogs now pulling in unison, Jeff and Paul have the combined power to beat the deep snow. I did it! Yes! Beautiful! It's worth every sweat! Hip! 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 Did it! All right, all right, all right. Almost there, guys, all right! Hey! Hey, Steve! Hey, buddy! Jeff, it's good to see you! How heavy is it? All right. Uh, 17 pounds. You made it look like 1,700 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just so thankful today to, uh, to get this tower and a wind generator and uh, supplies out here. Yeah, as long as you're here, I better take care of you. Even in these tough conditions, the dog team proves its worth. You know, I can get a snow machine and, and come out here. But there are times when you're broke down or you can't get the machine started. You're just done. We're uh, the reliability of dogs. And it's such a Alaska way. It's the old way and uh, it, I like that. Hey guys. The dogs never let me down. It's an unconditional love like, like what I have for my dad. Right dad? Right on! <laughs> no, that was huge today. But delivering the wind generator was just the first part of their day. Now, Jeff and Paul must use the remaining daylight to work on their own log cabin. Ready. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Safe. All right. All right. Safe journey. Yep, yep. Good luck. Nice and easy, and let it roll. Freight hauler Roger Phillips and his wife Myra hit the 36-mile trail with 8,000 pounds of dog food in tow. Here goes nothing. But it's Myra's first time hauling a double cargo sled. I'm a little nervous about it. I'll let 
Roger go first, and we'll see what happens. Thirty-two dog teams depend on this dog food for the Northern Lights 300 dog race. So Roger and Myra have got no room for error. There is a schedule that the mushers lay out when to feed the dogs and what to feed them. It's important that the food gets to the right place. off the hood and see what's going on here. Oh, it's working hard. Good God, it got hot. This machine has a tendency to overheat under real heavy loads. Even as cold as it is today, it needs more air. And with the race starting first thing tomorrow, Roger needs a quick solution. I've put some brackets in to raise the hood about four inches. Take the strap. That will give me better air circulation and cool off the transmission and drivetrain better. Oh my. But fixing the snow machine is only half the battle. It settled a little bit. We're just gonna put ratchet straps around them and try and pick them back up. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna pull. All right, pull. Push them together. And looking over at my wife, she's still smiling or baring her teeth. I'm not sure which. Only uh, 31 more and we can get rid of this. Ready, babe? There. miles to the southeast. Shelly, the caretaker at Temper Strike called me. They're out of propane, and so I got to get up there and get them some propane so they don't lose all the food that they've got for the winter. The pending winter in Hell's Canyon is not for the faint of heart. Temperatures drop below zero and heavy snow can shut down the high pass at Pittsburgh Summit, a vital supply route to the area. The few who stay don't just live, they survive. In the wintertime, the days are short. At 4.30, you better be pretty much off the water. I mean, it's pitch black at 5 o'clock, so I'm not really interested in having to uh, run at night by myself. This is uh, Temperance Creek. I got to hurry up and get this thing tied up. I don't got any time to waste today. Let's go. I can go. Temperance Creek, it's a hunting and fishing lodge, almost like a bed and breakfast. A lot of fishing guides bring their clients here and we'll take care of them. There's my tank right there. Come on, get it. Hi, Bryce. Hey, Shelly, how are you? I'm good. I'm down here about eight months out of the year. I'm a caretaker, cook, just keep the place looking happy. These are some of our propane lights right here. All the appliances run on propane. The stove, refrigerators, freezers. Okay. Bryce plans to refuel with a local propane supplier five miles downriver at Pittsburgh Landing. But that means hauling back the old fuel tank.
I'm switching around. It's so hard to back that thing on this trailer backwards, right? So what I do is put the receiver on the front. Just in case. How am I looking? Yeah, straighten, straighten your straight tire. Straight back, I'll uh -huh. make it. My tires will make it. Yep, straight back. Jet boat pilot Bryce Barnes is racing to refill a propane tank at his Temperance Creek Ranch before the winter weather sets in. But right now, he's being held up by his own boat. I can't quite push it over this hump. And so what I do is hook a chain and just start cranking. It'll pull my propane tank right up to that peak. See, that's moving. It's not very fast. Nothing is ever easy. I'm up on the ramp now. I'm just going to see if I can push it on here. OK. It's on. Thank you, Shelly. I'm good now. Okay. See you later. Let's go. Anytime you got a big propane tank like this, it's got to make sure it's strapped down real good. It's not really the propane. It's just having that kind of weight on a trailer. You know, my straps break and the trailer rolls forward. All the weight can go up and my pumps will come out of the water and then I don't have no control of the boat. Bryce is meeting a local propane supplier at Pittsburgh Landing, a spot reachable by river, but not always by road. It's a gravel road and it's just really steep and this time of the year there gets to be snow on the top of it. It's a pretty nasty road for a propane truck, that's for sure. Well, there's Pittsburgh Landing right there. I don't see the propane truck waiting for me. I sure hope he shows up. Crap. Crap, crap. Over 1,700 miles to the northwest. That's it, Troy! Good boy! Dog mushers Jeff and Paul Heeman hey, 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 hey. are taking their family to build their backcountry dream. Wham! Oh. You're the man, Charlie! <laughs> To build this house is probably going to take roughly around 45 logs. So we've got some work ahead of us. Right. We have to gather the logs um, right now in the wintertime because right now um, we're able to get out and access our property and slide these logs down the frozen creek. We're so close, Charlie! Yeah All right. Whoa. But with only a few hours of daylight to cut the trees and haul them into place, they're counting on a little extra help. You can't bring a bulldozer out in the Alaska range, heck no. But you can bring a dog team, and that's what I've got, so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> There's a bunch of standing dead spruce that we're going to cut down and harvest and do some uh, hauling back for a cabin. Finding the right kind of trees proves easy. But with the nearest hospital almost two hours away, 
They're not taking any chances. Clearing it so we have a quick path out of here. We don't want to die trying to dodge a fallen tree. We're not cutting anything green. There's a spruce beetle in Alaska that is invasive and it's slowly killing off these big spruce trees. Phillips and his wife Myra are pulling 8,000 pounds of dog food through driving snow. Can't see. And they've yet to make their first drop. My right ear is getting really cold from this crosswind. It's been snowing pretty consistent. And I was following the fellow that maintains the lower part of the river, and he turned off to go home, and I didn't realize it, and I'm on the trail to his home. I feel kind of stupid for doing what I did. There is nothing that I can do to turn them around. We're gonna hook your machine up to my load tie a rope between us because there's no freaking way one machine's gonna pull through this trail. Stand up or kneel, do something, so that if your load breaks through and your sled stop, you go over the windshield, not into the windshield. It will hurt less. A little bit of discouragement right now. I'm tired, I'm ready to be done. I'm not sure freighting is really for me. Ready? Okay. All right, let's do this. Easy, easy. Okay, now that's all done. Between the machine overheating and taking the wrong trail, We've burned up a lot of valuable time. We can't get away with more mistakes. It can't happen. After a 10 hour day, Roger and Myra's joint effort gets them to their first drop point, Yentna Station. All right, you're free. Oh. Thank you, God. My job was to get it here. I got it here. But even freight haulers need time to rest. My plan is to get me and my wife home, get some sleep, and we do this all again tomorrow. They've still got to deliver food for 500 dogs to the race's second checkpoint. Ready? Ready. today, it's a sure bet they'll get there. So I gotta get there, or there's gonna be a bunch of hungry dogs. And on a critical delivery like this, even Roger can't rely on just one snow machine. So he's got his wife, Myra, along again for backup. I was looking forward to sleeping in today, but 
with everything that happened yesterday, I will feel better being able to help out if needed. Kinda wishing I'd have made this whole trip last night before we got this snow. This could be a nightmare. Rogers fast approaching Shell Hills. A series of sudden climbs on a narrow track. Yeah! Taking it on with two freight sleds is no cakewalk. I'm into the real rough section. The combination of vertical, fresh snow, and 1,200 pound freight sleds typically is not a good recipe for success. I'm already losing traction in this heavy snow. Oh. Give the machine a little break. And myself. With 2,400 pounds of cargo, Roger can't get to the top of the hill without a plan. With this much snow, we're going to just hook both machines together and pull one sled at a time. When you can pull, pull, but don't run into the back of me. The whole idea of using two machines is, is so that we don't stop, don't get stuck. All right? I have been through the hills before, but not pulling a freight sled. Could be challenging with the new snow. She is such a trooper just for being here. This is tough. You ready to do this? As I'll ever be. Tying the vehicles together gives Roger and Myra more power. But it's not the snow machine that decides the outcome. It's the driver. Dog mushers Jeff and Paul Heeman are tackling danger in pursuit of their off-grid dream. Yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> Every tree that falls away from me is a good fall. <laughs> you get to work? Yeah. Uh. Jeff clears the first log of debris and readies it for hauling. The key is to try to wrap the rope around itself. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Be careful. OK, you too. Let's get this show on the road, huh? Great. That's it, that's it. These dogs are working their butt off hauling these logs for me, but you know, they all know that they're at the end of the rainbow that they're gonna be hanging out in the cabin with me when it's all said and done. Woo! All right, Charlie. I'm such a lucky man. You know, I'm on this journey of building this homestead with my dad and my, my whole family. Whoa! Oh no, we went too far. Next year, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll be we'll be living here. Round two, we're gonna go get those other logs, sweetie. It's great, living life on my own terms. The dogs make light work of the first six logs. Ha! Easy. And help Jeff's family prepare for their future. You should have seen when I got back with the log that I brought back for Heather. She was ecstatic. Yeah, I bet. Ecstatic. I mean, this is our lifelong dream coming true. It really is. We're pretty lucky to have the three generations being right here all together. All right. Whoa. That's it. That's it. That's it. G, G. All right, Charlie. OK, whoa, that's good, babe.
did it. Woo! Man. We got the logs for our cabin. Back in Idaho. Jet boat pilot Bryce Barnes is counting on a critical delivery of propane. I'm not for sure if he's going to make it. But with the fuel supplier nowhere to be found, he must seek out another option. Somehow I have to get her some type of propane tonight. I got some buddies on the river. I'm going to run and check and see if one of those guys has a spare cylinder of propane and buy me a little bit of time. In these remote parts, propane is a necessity for survival, particularly with winter just around the corner. We're about 60 miles up the river, so uh, we really are off the grid. There's no civilization anywhere close to us right now. People always want to live off the grid. The reality is how much work it takes and uh, how much supplies you need. It's amazing. People take it for granted how easy it is. You know, you got gas hooked up to your house, electricity just shows up, you pay a bill and it's there. It's not that way here. You work for it. Pack your own gas for your electricity. Cut your own wood for your heat. I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. But with just 15 homes on this 70 mile stretch of river, next door neighbors are few and far between. So I'm gonna stop at my buddy Mike Luther's house and uh, I don't even know if he's here right now, but he's usually the only place up here where there is anybody. Well, I can see some propane cylinders there on the dock. Hopefully they're not all empty. I'll just cross my fingers that one of those propane tanks right there, maybe he's got one of those that are full that I can borrow. 50-50 chance. Hey, Mike. Hey, guy, what are you up to? You out of propane? <laughs> Jet boat pilot Bryce Barnes is desperate to get a shipment of propane back to his ranch before winter sets in. My propane guy didn't make it over the hill, so I was hoping. Uh, I just filled all these. You did? That's yeah. pretty awesome right yeah. there. We live here year round. I've been here for 16 years now. This is home. I'll just help you slide it right over there sure. if you want. Propane and diesel are a commodity up here. You got to have it to keep these places going. We're off the grid, you know. Bring it back when you're done. Yeah, man. Fill I, it up, though. I will. Right. I always will. I won't bring it back empty <laughs> at all. Thank you, sir. Mike's awesome, right? He didn't even hesitate. Someday he could be in the same boat, and I'll return the favor for sure. Now, Bryce can be sure his ranch has at least one week of heat and power. If it'll stay here for me. Check, check, here we go. The guy couldn't make it over the pass with the big rig, but I got you one cylinder. Yay! You'll be set so your freezers and everything won't thaw out. Cool. Watch out, Baxter. Hey, Shelly! You should have propane! Yay! Okay, we're 
good to go. Safe travels. Watch that storm because it's about ready to hit. Gotcha. I'm just pushing daylight right now. Bryce's duties are done for the day, but even with winter coming, there's no R&R &R in Hell's Canyon. It's beautiful, it's tough, it's rough country. It's the price you pay for living in Hell's Canyon. If it was easy, everybody would live here and then it would suck. Back up in Alaska. Freight hauler Roger Phillips and his wife Myra are battling to deliver 2,400 pounds of dog food by 4 o'clock. Easy. On. Myra is learning a lot this trip uh, and improving her skills. Hey, give me that a moment. Yeah, your running boards are yeah. real bad. Good call. And I've learned to be very receptive at listening to her ideas. Do we want to prop this up? Yep. Well, we're going to need that. I was pretty nervous when we started this delivery, but I am beginning to understand why Roger enjoys freighting. I think Roger sees Alaska with his heart, not his eyes. All righty. Let's get this dog food there. Thanks to his wife's help, Roger delivers the dog food to the race checkpoint ahead of schedule. It's here. We're here. Lori, I'm Roger. Roger, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm a vet tech, and I came up with my veterinarian, and we're supporting the Northern Lights 300 dog race. Tell us how you want us to help. Uh, if you're able to pop the side ones, go ahead and pop them now. We've been waiting for food and people all day, and uh, fortunately, the food made it. Roger was able to come out here and bring it to us. He's indispensable. Appreciate the help on no, loading. Thank you. With Myra's support, Roger can now take on even tougher delivery jobs. I love you. I love you too. Thanks for your help today. You're welcome. I'm ready. Coming to the bush was either learn that we like each other or learn that we don't like each other and I've learned how to love with a passion.